Uh, we have Ben Henderson, who's an RSH researcher in the Marie Curie Impact Network. He's just coming to the end of his PhD at the moment, and his research focus has been on using SCIMS techniques related to exhaled breath analysis, specifically working with PTRMS. So his main project during the PhD is in the Peppermint Initiative, an international collaboration between research institutes taking the first step towards standardization. Uh, over to you, Ben, and thanks for presenting. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ben Henderson. I'm an early stage researcher as part of the Impact Network, under which I've been completing a PhD at the Radboud University in the Netherlands under the supervision of Dr. Simona Christesu. Just coming up to the end of my four years now, um, and one of the main projects I've been working on has been this uh, Peppermint Initiative. And so today I'm very excited to share with you kind of a summary of the last four years work relating to this, uh, specifically um, with a focus on proton transfer reaction, mass spectrometry and the results that we've been able to gain on this. So for those of you who may not know about the Peppermint Initiative, I'll just give a quick background and overview. So as we know, uh, one of the main issues currently facing breath research is a lack of standardization. So back in 2016 at the IABR Breath Summit, a task force was created to kind of, I say, take the first steps towards standardization. And it was made up of these four institutes um, as the core management team. Since then, we've managed to expand and recruit more partners, currently up to 16. And we're always looking to recruit more people. So if you're interested in this talk and you want to get involved, please contact one of us afterwards. Um, and we'll be happy to, happy to help and have more people join us on this journey. So basically, the idea of the Peppermint Initiative is to come up with a standardized experiment that will allow us to compare different breast sampling and analysis methods. Um, and from this, we aim to collect a set of benchmark data, which we can share with the research community so that anyone in future who wants to take part can carry out this standardized experiment. Um, analyze their results and compare it against this set of benchmark data. And as you can see, we have a wide range of institutes involved. So that's great because it also means we have a wide range of instrumental techniques available to us. So the goal is eventually that we can compare the results from each of these instrumental techniques um, against each other. And we can just come up with like I say, these benchmark values um, for the future, yeah. So the experiment itself is a washout experiment and it's quite straightforward. We ask participants to take a 200 milligram peppermint oil capsule. It's just a food supplement uh, from, from a local store, Boots in the UK. And Basically, what we do is we monitor the washout of selected compounds from this peppermint oil over time. So this figure was taken from a pilot study that was carried out to try and determine um, the time points that we want to collect at. So we take one before they ingest the capsule and then at the following time points afterwards. And then like I say, we evaluate the washout profile of the compounds contained within the peppermint oil capsule. So as I showed on the first slide, there are a lot of different instrumental techniques available to the, to the peppermint group. And again, as I said, we want to be able to compare all of those different techniques. However, first we're separating them and just looking at the results based on the instrumental technique first is to not put too much um, complications at this very first stage. So what I'm focusing on is the PTRMS results. And basically from this, we were able to collect 47 individual washouts 
and that is from five different data sets or, or research groups taking part. So what we wanna do is look at the log fold change over time, and that's gonna show us the washout characteristic. Then we're looking at the log-log linear relationship, um, and that is for our regression analysis, which we'll then use to determine our set of benchmark values for each compound contained within the capsule. And we're gonna use the lower 95% confidence interval of the mean time to wash out as our benchmark value. So I'll just give a quick overview of the different data sets that we had involved in this study. So what I want you to focus on here is that we have quite a wide range. So we have four online sampling methods and one offline sampling method, different types of PTRMS. So we have some with time of flight mass spectrometers, some with quadrupole mass spectrometers. And what I feel we have from, from this data set is a really good um, overview and range of the types of PTRMSs that are being used for breath analysis currently in the community. So, as I said, we have to measure the washout of certain compounds contained within the peppermint oil. So the first step was to find out what these, what these key volatiles were. So we performed a headspace analysis using GCMS, and you can see that the compounds labeled in bold are the key peppermint compounds. So what we had to do was take each one individually and measure it on our PTR MS. And that is because those of you who know on PTR MS, we're measuring the mass to charge. Um, so we don't get a complete compound identification. We have to know what the, what the correct mass to charge for each compound is gonna be for us to monitor. So we actually did a study where we altered the conditions um, of the PTRMS to see how these compounds reacted. And eventually from that, we could come up with a list of what the, what the, main, um, the main signals are for each compound that we can use. Um, and if you check out that reference at the bottom that has all the details on that study. So please check out that article. So, like I said, we had to find out what the, what the key product ions were. And this is a summary. I've rounded them up to integers because we have the mix of time of flight mass spectrometer and quadrupole mass spectrometer. And so in the interest of keeping it consistent, we rounded up to integers, even though the TOF does have better mass resolution. Uh, the in interesting thing to see here is that for our monoterpenes and our senior, we had the same product ions. So unfortunately, there was no way that we could separate them further just using these techniques. Um, of course, it is possible if you were to have a pre-separation like a fast GC column in front of the PTRMS, but for, for the most part and for the general research, uh, we have to just consider these product ions as these compounds, we can't split it further. However, for the other three, we have nice, unique, um, unique product ions, which we can use. So then all the, all the data sets carried out their, carried out their washout experiments, uh, sent us the results. And then we look just specifically at these, at these key product ions um, for each data set. So this is just a quick summary where we look at the log fold change of the log fold change in concentration compared to the baseline. And we have the different data sets in there all individually color coded. And there are a few, few key, key messages that I wanna get out from these figures. So one is that there's quite a large variation firstly within each data set. So this is showing the mean of each data set with the, with the standard deviation. 
so there's quite wide um and also between the data sets there's quite there can be quite a difference um as you see this purple one at the bottom for the monoterpenes is quite quite different from the other ones so this was really interesting for us to find out um another point was that some people were having uh data points lower than the pre-ingestion baseline. So this meant perhaps there was a contamination either in the sampling room they were in, or maybe the participant had brushed their teeth or consumed some food or drink prior to the experiment, which may have caused an artificially high baseline. Of course, we asked everyone to avoid this kind of thing before. However, maybe one or two did not fully, fully, uh, take it on board. So from that, we then uh, go to the linear regression analysis where we look at the log log fold change. So again, it's the same fold change, but now we have the log time in hours and this gives us our regression. So first of all, we looked at it for each data set. So we took the mean of each data set and plotted the 95% confidence around it. And then for the benchmark calculation, we combined all the data sets together. And as I said at the very start, the benchmark is taken as the lower 95% confidence interval um, when it reaches baseline. So again, you can see there's quite a variation. Um, this is just one example from the monoterpenes in Zinio, but this purple data set is kind of a lot lower than the other ones. And here is just a quick summary table of all of the results uh, for each of the different compounds. So firstly, we have each data set and the results from there, we have the mean time to wash out and then in brackets, the lower and upper 95% confidence interval. And then on the final column, we have all the data sets combined. And so this is what we used for our benchmark value as the lower 95% confidence. So we took, we took um, the ones highlighted in yellow. One of the take home messages from this slide is that menthol has a very low time to wash out. Um, and it also has a very high variation, um, especially in data set three and four. So this means it's not really um, such a reliable marker in our case for, for the peppermint washout. However, ones like the monoterpenes and the menthofuran, they're having a long time to wash out and also quite good, um, quite good vari variability, um, not, too, not too high. So what we concluded from this is that menthol probably isn't one of the one of the best compounds to actually monitor. However, we have three other um, three other signals, three other compounds, which offer a very good indication of the washout experiment. So this has been a very quick overview. Um, apologies, but we will be publishing this technical note, which will go into everything in a lot more details. So these are just kind of a few of the few of the conclusions we've come to. So as I just said, one is that menthol is not suitable. We've calculated our benchmark values. And so these will allow groups in the future to compare themselves against. So PTRMS users. Um, we saw this large inter and intra variation between the data sets. And so what we think is that there's quite a key role for biological variation um, in the washout. However, at this point, we can't go into it in too much detail. However, we will be publishing a synoptic paper, which is going to combine all the results from all the technical notes. And this will really dive into the effect of biological variation in a lot of detail. Obviously, this, this project is strengthened by having more data. So please, um, if you found it interesting, get in contact with one of us and 
join us on the journey, as I say. For more information, please check out our recent publication where we go into a lot of details about the rationale behind everything and the experiment and what we're going to go and do moving forward. So please check that out. Lastly, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to the breath research community as a whole. Um, by the time I'm giving this presentation, I'll be in my second week at a brand new job, um, fortunately in a different field to breath analysis. So this is kind of, let's say a final, a final thank you. So just first huge thank you to my supervisor, Simona. Couldn't have done it without her. Also to the Impact Network, um, the IABR, Alstone for putting on this wonderful conference and pretty much to everyone I've met over, over my time. I don't think there's, I don't have time to thank everyone, but I just like to yeah, send my sincere thanks to everyone that I've got to know over the last four years and hopefully we can stay in touch in the future moving on. Uh, so thank you everyone. Um, and please, any questions, shoot them over and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for that, Ben. We, we, we will miss you in the breath community. Uh, we hope you return uh, at some point. Um, I want to ask a quick question. So you, you touched on the biological variation uh, point there. Uh, I know there's going to be more presented on that, but I was wondering if you could you know, kind of touch on or elaborate a little bit further the types of variations. Is that things like for the individual capsules, the gastric clearance, the absorption type variation? You know, is it the rates at which uh, these substrates are metabolized in the, the liver? I was wondering if you could just kind of expand a little bit further on what you think is happening there. Yeah, so there's a, still quite an investigation to go on into that specifically. Um, but certainly what we've seen so far is that maybe like the, the BMI um, can have quite quite an effect. I know from my personal experience, when I do the washout, I tend to peak very late compared to other people who are a lot smaller and kind of lighter than me. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's a lot to still be unpacked in it. Um, but that's the great thing kind of about this study is that we're able to collect this data now that's going to hopefully help us answer these kind of questions um, and really give us more of an insight into how much this uh, variability is, is playing a part. Great. Uh, one question here, I think you touched on a little bit already. So uh, dietary restrictions, uh, uh, pre-sample uh, collection, I think you mentioned yeah. that some of, the, uh, some of the compounds were actually a bit higher at baseline. And the suspicion was that maybe you know, for dietary sources. So I think, you know, had you said that they were, uh, there was a restrictive uh, diet, but people may not have complied. Yeah. So, yeah, the idea was to ask people to not have anything kind of peppermint flavored for 12 to 24 hours before starting the experiment. Um, however, I think by looking at some of the results and uh, asking the participants, some of them didn't fully adhere to it, unfortunately. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, I guess, kind of one of maybe the things that we need to really overcome in breath research is how much, let's say, non-compliance from participants may affect our results. So it's, uh, yeah, it was a bit, bit annoying to see people brush their teeth just before, but it's kind of is how these people chose to act. So yeah, unfortunately it did, did affect the results slightly. Yeah, no worries. I agree. I guess they don't want to show up uh, with smelly breath. Uh, no, no. Um, one question here from Liz for the offline PTRMS, how did you decide when to take the time point to make it comparable mm -hmm. to the online methods? Uh, and what duration was the offline sample uh, and online sample taken over? Yeah. So the time points were all the same uh, before 60 minutes, 90 minutes, etc. cetera. Um, with the offline sampling, we, we filled the breath into two Tedlar bags and this took maybe 30 seconds to fill a bag. So we were just 
ask the participant to exhale straight away. Um, and then once it was collected, it would be measured on the instrument. So it was quite comparable to the online methods. And yeah, for the, for the online, they at each time point would have the participants sit down um, and they'll perform, perform the measurement at the designated time point. So I think there was a good comparison between the two. There wasn't too much uh, deviation. Uh, Drodo is asking just to confirm the units on those time values. Was it minutes? Yes, it was minutes. Yes. Thank you, Dorota. Sorry for, <laughs> sorry for missing that off. <laughs> um, and time for one last one. Uh, what do you conclude regarding the best analytical setup for breath analysis in terms of um, aspect ionization methods, so PTR versus 70 electron volt ionization, for instance? Yeah. Well, I think seeing as my PhD was based fully on PTR, I'm going to go, uh, going to go with PTR on that one, I think, uh, just for the benefits of online sampling. Um, that's what I really like about it. It's my Excellent. main one. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Ben, for that. Uh, good luck with uh, uh, your next job. And uh, again, we hope to see you back yeah. in the breath community at some point in the future. Yeah, Thanks a lot. Hopefully, still have to defend my thesis, so still time. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Cheers, hi. Good luck with that. Bye. Bye. Bye.